Hello everyone, Mizram here, bringing you today another Learn From Your Mistake. Today we're going to look at the game submitted by Vrio Norg, playing the Night Soaker. So very quickly about the lanes, we're going to see that um, the team composition isn't that bad. We are going to have a Queen of Pain middle, with a bottom lane with a uh, Lina and um, Na uh, uh, Anti Mage, and top lane is going to be Night Stalker with the uh, Shadow Shaman. So usually as, as a Night Stalker you would prefer to go in the mid lane, but since we have a Queen of Pain here, it it is also good to have the Queen of Pain middle. So you're in a pub, you know, you have the Queen of Pain who absolutely wants the mid lane, so you're going to say, okay, I'm going to leave the mid lane and let it to the Queen of Pain. And it's actually okay, you can do this. Especially since you have a Shadow Shaman as support. Uh, what you're aiming for as a Night Stalker, because Night Stalker is one of those heroes who, who you have to play differently than the other heroes. It's one of the heroes you really need to get the farm and the level for the 6 first minute during the day. And then with the items you're gonna transition into the first night. And during the first night you, real, you will have to do something, because if you do not get any kills, for example for some heroes, you might be saying, okay, I, I don't I don't have any kills for like you know, during the entire night. It doesn't matter, right? It doesn't matter when I get the kills as long as I get the farm. When you have a nice circle, you're relying on aggression. So you really need to to do something. And right now we're seeing that uh, both the uh, nice circle and the uh, Shadow Shaman are taking a lot of unnecessary damage. And um, Shadow Shaman almost, almost dead right now. <laughs> Thankfully, not going to get touched by the... Uh, Windrunner power shot. So, the, already the mistake that we saw is Night Stalker. If we saw, in the, if you actually looked at the first, uh, the first creep wave, he just right clicked and auto attacked. So, you want to have control over your lane. You do not want to auto push the lane like you're like he's doing right now. Plus, what you see right now is when whenever you do this, you're getting right clicked down by your enemies. This is not something you want. So, how do you do this? As a melee hero, when you're s sitting against a dual ranged lane, it it's always going to be, uh, you know, very, very dangerous. So, what can you do when you're against this kind of stuff? First, when you start the game, you see that there's four enemy ranged heroes. That means that it's better to actually, uh, to actually think about getting a stout shield at level 1, instead of, for example, getting a circlet or a uh, get the strength. You really need to shut down this harass potential and well, how do you do so by using by buying a stout shield so then to take the last hits instead of just sitting there and at right clicking the creeps you go far from the creeps and whenever there's a, a creep on low health you go in and you take the last hit so you actually have to time this right if you wait for the creep to actually be low health what happened is the creep will die before you reach the creep so you have to calculate and realize how many creeps are attacking your targets because you see that right now in the other side, they're they're pretty much doing the same thing, right? Clicking the creeps down. So uh, you're pretty lucky. You have the experience under your tower, and um, and you you can just like you know farm under your tower pretty well. So how to farm under your tower? Um, if in the event where you do not have any creeps and only the tower is attacking the the enemy creep, if an enemy melee creep is full health, you you will you will usually have to attack him once. Let the towers almost kill him and then attack him another time. So very good shackle here by the Wayne Runner. Not gonna do a whole lot, uh, thankfully for the poor Night Stalker. You're still pretty, pretty tanky. So I was saying one right click on the range creep, one right click on the melee creep, and then wait for the uh, tower to almost kill them, and then finish with your uh, last, uh, you know, auto attack. Now. Something else I noticed, you he just used to, uh, the mouth to click on the, his self before using it on himself. Um, in the beginning, it might be hard to have too many uh, short, uh, you know, uh, short, uh, short kits. No, how many? How do you say that? Uh, short keys. And um, you know, you might be saying, okay, you know, my inventory, I just have to click on it. But it is very good to, at first, get the habit of using the short keys. For example. Uh, you know, you have the normally Q, W, E, R, and uh, it's good to actually, you know, uh, um, bind those keys as well. For example, I use the Alt Q, W, E, A, D, uh, A, S, D with the, uh, with the Alt. And um, once you get used to it, it will come, you know, naturally. So you won't have ever to click again anymore. 
And um, right now we see that the Nasdaqer is only sitting with five creeps, so it's 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 actually quite bad because you need the farm, as I said, to be relevant in this first night. Skill build wise, it's quite okay. He's going for two level of void, one level of creeping fear, and one level of hunter in the night. So it's always good to have one level of uh, creeping fear because you never know when you might need the silence. It might save you even during the day. During the day, it um, gives three seconds of, of silence, which is already uh, quite a lot. And during the night, it's five seconds. And leveling it up doesn't really change something much. It, um, it just adds one second duration every time. So early game, you don't really need that. And um, right now, the, the, uh, you, you, the, the night soccer didn't pay attention. And this, this is why he actually missed a kill before, because of this. Um, you know, he could have got the, uh, the, uh, the Windrunner, but instead, what happened is Queen of Pain is going to get really low on health. She's going to take tower aggro, and she may even die from this. No, she doesn't. So I think one level of creeping fear, it's all you need. No, no need for anything else right now. And max the void for, for damage. And if you're full mana, you do not want to stay at full mana. Your enemies, they're ranged, but they're very low on uh, health. So you want to use this nuke to put them on the back foot. So right now, he, if he gets the Void level 3, he can r really put down some heavy harass on the on the little um, wisp here. And um, he's not leveling up, so... Oh, he actually... No, no, he didn't, he didn't level the, uh, this, the uh, stats. But um, level 5, get your, get your skill, man. And um, so... Right now, the Night Stalker is just sit sitting on the lane, and this is something... No, this is something you do not want to to have. Hunter in the Night from the level 1 to level 2 only adds 5% move speed and 15 attack speed. In the early game, you do not really rely on your right-click damage. You rely on the burst coming from the Void. And if you level the Void instead, it adds 95 damage from uh, 160 to 255. This is 95 damage. It's enormous for uh, for a low level uh, you know low um, level enemy. It's uh, something like for example if we look at the wisp right now he has 700 health and the windrunner only have 500 so that means that two void almost kill the windrunner. But instead he levels the hunter in the night. And second thing that is wrong right now is Night Soccer is sitting on his lane not doing anything still farming up. Night Soccer as I said is a hero that relies on timing. And it also relies on the aggression. If you do not, uh, if you are not, uh, if you are not aggressive with the nice soccer, you're pretty much wasting your pick, because you you won't be able late game to like out carry enemy heroes, or you won't be able to like uh, soak up as much damage as another uh, tanky hero. And right now you see, Windrunner is actually being very very far off, and that's the moment where it should really be going. But uh, nice soccer doesn't see that his ally is not doing anything. So he's gonna go back, and now you see that Shadow Shaman is going in, but he's already backed. He doesn't really pay attention to what's happening. So instead of getting two kills, his ally will get killed instead. And this is a it's, this is a shame because with the level three void, and by paying more attention to what's happening, he would have gotten the kill and he would have gotten safe away. Instead, he's sacrificing his ally because as soon as he realizes he's in tr in trouble, he sees that he cannot go one versus two. He runs away and that's it. There's no follow-up. You always have to be aware of your surroundings. What's happening here is you went up without your ally support, okay? Then you then you started to back off. And you have to realize that the Arasa actually came in the long route and he actually went on the on the on the enemy right after this. And um, very good shackle shot again. Not nice. gonna land. And uh, see how how little health the voice pad if you actually level the void again at level six instead and not taking the ultimate <laughs> the ultimate can be took if i can be taken to level six to lengthen the night but usually you really need these levels of void and um you know you can instead of getting a one level six uh, uh darkness you can also get the hunter in the night at level six level two i said it wasn't worth it but it's not worth it compared to leveling void but it's still worth it compared to leveling the darkness because darkness, well, it's still a escape for free mechanism almost because it gives you a, a very good movement speed boost. But as I said, nice soccer, you do not want to stay on the lane. You want to, you want to actually go and uh, and uh, you know gank. So right now you see that the enemy are tower diving bottom. You should 
right now just watch what's happening and teleport because you you're one of those heroes who almost uh, he all, all, although you may not be uh, able to you know catch up the uh, no you may not be able to stand in the team fight right now you're able to chase the enemy that means if you're teleporting to a tower where the enemy just tower dive a hero the chances are your enemy heroes are low on health because they will take tower damage and also they will take damage from the hero running away or something so teleport to the bottom tower look at what's going on and you may be able to catch one or two kills because there are stragglers and again not looking at what's uh, what your allies are doing so instead of getting a kill on the wisp you won't get a kill on anyone because windrunner oh actually windrunner is going to get it down i, I thought with the wind run would be enough but um it's it was not counting the um the uh queen of pain's um magic damage so for those who don't know windrunner which is the the uh, this ginger that just plays against the uh nice soaker why is she very strong well she has a very strong nuke uh, that is uh, that has a ro long range and uh, she has this shackle shot that can potentially latch two enemy heroes up to four seconds or uh, 3.75 seconds like this and uh, you see how much damage the, the power shot does and the wind run allows her to have 100% evasion for some time so right now Into the shade. right now the winner the uh, the nice Darker going very very late on his nukes and taking a lot of damage so he might go down again and again when you're when you are uh, running away, do what? What is? I know. Oh, so I guess this was a misclick. But when you're running away, I said this a couple of times already in my last videos. Do not do not look at where you're going. Look at where the danger is. So right click on the minimap, like he did this in the early game to go in the lane. You just you know you're buying stuff and you right click on the tower and your hero will just go on the tower. You know that he's going to. So no worry here. No no problem. Same for this. You're running away. Right click on the tower, and or even farther than the tower, and then look at what's behind you. So right now, what can you again? Can he go for? Uh, he does not decide to go for anything, and I think this is a mistake. As a um, as a night stalker, you really want to um, to have these early items to really be efficient in the first night. And right now, the night is almost going to be over. So never mind this. So, for example, what are good items on the Night Stalker? The Urn of Shadow adds uh, 6 strength to you, and you already have 1 gauntlet. And also it, get, it gives 50% mana re regeneration, and gives free salve. Free salve, or free uh, damage over time uh, spells. So, since you're someone who is very aggressive, you should be getting kills, or you should assist in getting kills. And your Urn should, should, should always have some charge in it. And that means after you actually tower dive to get a kill, you can go away and then heal yourself up with a charge. Again, camera control. You do not even see the enemy using the power shot. So you're just running into it. Same with the wisp. He's harassing you. You're not even seeing it. Right now you're just watching Right now you're watching it and it's good. But before this it was not. And um, good shackle shot. Again, gonna land a kill on the night stalker as well. Because night stalker right now is gonna get chased by the warlock. When you have this much... Uh, damage over time on you, you know you're dead. What can you do instead of just running and waiting for your death? Nuke the enemy hero and do as much damage you can before dying. Because if you do not have something like a teleport scroll or a wand that allow you to maybe, maybe, just maybe survive by using some trick and you know healing at the last moment or ju juking in the fog, if you know that you're going to die no matter what because, for example, damage over time on your, he on your face and you have 50 health left, and the poison is like 200 damage so you know that you're dead anyway use the void try to right click the enemy or run under your tower to force them to actually follow you and take tower damage and then you might be able to land a assist for your ally that might be coming after instead right now what's happening is night stalker you're not playing your role as a night stalker you should be really roaming around when it's night time and doing uh, damage even if not picking the kills, you should be disrupting the game. That means that the enemy cannot farm safely because they know that you're around. And um, again, if even if you do not get the kills, it's something like Pudge, right? It, it, Pudge roams around, get kills, and if he doesn't get the kills, he's still standing here being a total pain in the ass. And behind is Pudge coming in. And, and right now he's running away. Instead of helping his ally, you know he the he has a he has a silence first, 
And second, he has also a uh, void. Instead, he used neither, and he just runs away. I know it's a pub game, and during, during pub game, you usually don't trust allies. But here, you're just playing on your own, and Night Stalker is not... You're not supposed to play on your own in Dota, ever. There are some heroes like Night Stalker that can pick a hero one-on-one, -on -one, but still, if you have allies, you have to consider this. You have to know that you can't help, or you can't help the ally. Sometimes, your ally is very low on health, and you know that he's gonna die anyway to AoEs. So you know you can't save him, you're just gonna run away. And it's like a necessary sacrifice. Because you, you will survive and your ally will die. But here in this case, you're almost full on mana. And you're not doing anything to help your ally. You have a void to slow the enemy, you're not using it. You have a, a silence to silence the punch from uh, eating the uh, Lina. You're not using it either. You're not using any. You're not doing anything. So this is a shame. So right now, getting the face boots, um, it's a questionable buy, but it's okay. It's not like uh, you know the worst item ever. Um, if you really want to go and use the nukes as much as possible, the arcanes is not bad. And um, right now, again, not looking at the minimap, so you you did not even see the punch coming up from behind, and not using the spells. Use your spell. Void to slow the enemy, or silence the the punch. And right now, right, like you have to use what the face boots you just bought. If you can't really, you know, if you're not used to uh, to use your items, I can understand this because uh, you know you're a new player. You already have lots of do uh, things to do by uh, knowing what skill to use, where to go, and everything. You do not know how to use the items. Right? Fine. In that case, do not use the items, but do not buy any items that can be used. Buy a power tread, for example. A power tread gives you strength and, uh, and uh, you know, uh, attack uh, attack speed and movement speed. All passive. You do not have to change it to agility or intelligence. Keep it in strength, and it's okay. Instead, you're buying phase boots, and you're not using the active ability of phase boots. That's just wasting these phase boots. So if you know that you cannot use an item because you're not used to it, do not buy it. Second thing is, um, even if you actually survive the uh, the warlock curse, the damage over time, you ran in a straight line when running away from the pudge. This is this is guaranteed kill because the pudge will just hook you and kill you. So very good war trap by the uh, by the um, uh, the shadow shaman. And right now you just realized, uh, I realize it too. He clicks on his skills to use it. Get used to use the short keys. You have to use the short keys. Right now, again, you see, click and click again. It delays you by a tremendous amount of time. You're not using any skill right now. You could be using so much skill, skills and you could be killing the Wisp as well. See Wisp on the screen, how low, little health he had? You could have killed him, but instead, since you just right, since you need to right click, uh, to click on your skill, like this, instead of just like pressing the Q and clicking, you're wasting a lot of time, and this is not efficient. You cannot do this. So I do not, I do not know what Dro is doing. She's uh, running around, getting killed by the towers, and um, and why is he? so he's waiting a lot of times before going in. And right, let, let's just let's just pause for a minute and let's see what item you could get if you're not used to click on the items. It happens. I'm not blaming you for it. I mean, um, right now, what you have to focus on, if you're watching this game, is if you're one of these players who is in this case where you have to click on the skills to use them, first, focus on the skills. Focus on how to use the Q, W, E, R uh, shortcuts. You need those shortcuts. You really need them. You cannot play without them. So get used to playing with the shortcuts first of only the skills. Let the items for later. So you want to have this. You want to you practice this. You have to get items that are not necessary to click on, because, for example, you come from League of Legends, and some uh, many of League of Legends items do not require to be to get clicked on. Many items of League of Legends also require to get clicked on. So no, never mind. It's a bad example. So for boots, get power treads. Put it in strength mode. It can never go wrong. It gives you health. It gives you attack speed. It gives you movement speed. If you do not know, even if you're an intelligent hero or agility hero, put it in strength mode and just just let it here. Just forget about it. Then, if you're doing quite, uh, you know, if you're not doing very well, which will happen if you're a new player, get bracers. 
bracers will give you uh, more strength, so more uh, health. And um, stacking one or two is always good to you know survive a bit longer in the fights. Third thing is always get a teleport scroll. You never know when you might need it to go to run away. You know, you instead of running away in a straight line, you can run away and hide in the jungle here, and hide in the trees, and teleport away. Or you might need it to teleport from your base to the uh, to the tower. So those are three items: the power treads, the bracers, and the teleport scroll. Now, for more advanced, uh, more advanced uh, items, you might want to go for something, some other thing that you cannot really activate, which are um, if you are a DPS hero. Actually, this is very, uh, this is very hard to say because uh, usually you might not want to go for a battle fury if you're not a good player because you will still die. Uh, one good uh, item all around is the Vanguard. If you're if you're actually you know going in the midst of the fight like the Night Stalker, and you are still taking too much damage because you don't really know how to position yourself well, get a Vanguard. A Vanguard will give you health. It will it will give you health regeneration, so less trip to the fountain, and it will give you man, uh, no damage block, so you don't have to care about the creeps a, a lot. Then other item that may be good all around is a Lincoln Sphere. You do not have to use it as well. It gives you mana regeneration, HP regeneration, and uh, attributes, as well as spell, sh uh, spell shield. So from those coming from League of Legends, it's the equivalent to Benchy build. And other items that you might not need to uh, to activate is the Hood of Defiance that you can buy if you have many many uh, uh, you know magic outcome uh, magic damage output from the enemy because it adds spell resi resistance. And you might want to go also for something like Assault Cuirass, which only adds the uh, attack speed and uh, uh, aura. It's uh, armor aura, so it helps you and your ally. Heart of Tarask if you want to tank up. And for the damage, you might might want to go for something like uh, for newbies. For newbies, if you cannot farm well, Senjin Yasha is okay because it's only uh, items that requires relatively low cost, like 1,000 maximum. And if you actually want to go for more uh, potent, like more in, uh, interesting items, you might want to go for Helm of Dominator if you want Life Steal. And uh, you know you can just ignore the activate ability if you're just too uh, you know too new to this game. Or you might want to go for a Daedalus for you know DPS. But overall, if you're still struggling with the skills, don't don't ever bother to try and buy an item that needs to be activated because you will not remember about it once you get used to using the skills very well then at that moment use the uh, you uh, buy the items that you want and learn to use them each item is like a new skill you have to know when to use them you have to know how much mana they cost and you have to know in what situation they benefit you the most so this is it for the little rent and let's continue the game so right now, 18 to 5, it looks it's looking pretty bad, and um, you know nothing really is uh, helping. So, nice soccer here. Every time you're you're running away, and you shouldn't be. You should be the one in the brunt of the fight. Um, the Queen of Pain isn't the one who should be going first because she she was she will die if it, this is the case. That's the case. You should be going first, landing the slow to actually catch up the enemy hero, and then your team is supposed to follow you and go in. So right now, see, see, see the the bad um, the bad camera control. It it allows the patch to pretty much hook you without you even knowing it, because the patch wasn't even your, in your screen. You didn't even see the the patch. So they're gonna take a tower. Not bad. And now, now he's just pretty much not knowing what you should do. So he's gonna follow the anti mage around. And getting the the last hits. Dire structures are fortified. And see this? This is a lot of time wasting wasted for just running around. This is time you're not using to get any experience or anything. So if you do not have anything to do, if no allies are actually going with you, because normally you should gang. It's night time. So normally you should go with some allies and decide, okay, you know what, Queen of Pain, Shadow Shaman, come with me, we're gonna get kills. And then you move with three heroes, and you might get some uh, some uh, you know some kills. And if no one's uh, really doing this, farm on the lane or farm in the jungle. If nothing, uh, you know, if the lanes are pushed or if someone is already on the lane. So right now, skill-wise, nothing really new. And um, 
Now he's going on the top lane with everyone and... And again, again, see how much time you're wasting by not clicking the skill? Windrunner has the time to go out of your vision. And, and, uh... Right, right now he's using it, but now it's too late. He, the punch have come in, and he's gonna take a lot of damage. He needs to silence someone, but instead he doesn't do anything, so he's gonna die again. So, nice soccer here. Um, basically, the problem of this player is you do not use your skills. It, it doesn't matter if you're a nice soccer or not nice soccer. It's just knowing to use the skills. So. If you have two skills, you have to use them. And if if there is allies fighting behind you, you have to notice it. Instead of going on the golem. So again, he could have could have went on someone, but uh, silence is necessary. No silence gonna come out. And behind. So at that point of the game, I think I pretty much covered all the Night Stalker's mistakes. Again, I'm gonna see if the game lasts any longer. So yeah, it's only uh, the mid. Uh, yeah, it's only uh, at half of the game. But I think, I think pretty much all the mistakes have been covered here. So the problem it does not really come from uh, you know making huge mistakes. It comes from being too new to the game. So there are players like this, and um, and of course you you will not get uh, very good at Dota 2 in one day. So gradually, you watch what we saw. What the videos I made, um, there are many. Uh, many of them are not for you because you're too new to the game. So before really paying attention to camera control, to everything like this, focus step by step on what you should do. First, understand your hero. Do not use the nice soccer if you do not know what the crippling fear does. Second, get used to the shortcuts. If you do not use the shortcuts, you will not win, you will not do anything, you will lose a lot of time, and you will never get better. So, step to recap, learn your hero, know what he does, and use the skills. Learn how to use the, the shortcuts, and learn to take any items that do not require to get activated if you are someone who can't activate the skills yet. So... Thank you for watching, I hope this helped some very new players, and I'll see you guys next time.